Okay, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, I'm getting to the age where I'm glad just to be anywhere, but uh, you know, here is good. We're at Magsfield, and I want to test a couple of things today. This won't be a really long flight. We're in the 150, and I'm in it because I'm familiar with it, and I want to test these uh, standalone panels that I got from Logitech. Uh, one is a radio panel, and one is uh, a controls panel that has you know, electronics, gear, magnetos on it, and so on. I want to see if I can get that to work uh, in VR. And I, I thought I, I ordered them because they were on sale, and they looked like a really good buy. Uh, but I thought I might, might wind up just using them when I play flat screen flight sims. Uh, but I'm going to try them in VR. Um, I think you develop a muscle memory. As I'm reaching forward now, I can find... Okay, so there I, my hand went to the the magneto switch, and above it is radios. Radio 1, radio 2. Way over to the right here, I can feel the gear. Okay, so I think you can learn to use them, just like you learn to use all the different buttons on your joystick when you're um, programming things in VR. But I must say... It would be nice to have a pass-through mode that was really clear. Just a, you know, a, a single, very clear black and white or hopefully color camera that would let me see my instrument panel or the, or the gizmos. But uh, that's the technical term, gizmos. On the other hand, every switch that I flip on the panel responds on the virtual panel in uh, Flight Sim. So we can figure that out pretty quick. All right, let's set our... Let's set mix to full, and parking brake is on. I'm going to get rid of the yoke, and not get rid of it, just remove it from visibility so that we can see everything. And now I'm going to use my Logitech settings to get everything turned on. I'm going to skip the magnetos right now, and I'm going to turn, yeah, okay, so there's Masters on. Oh, that's carpet. Cool. I didn't realize that. Okay. And um, the underneath, I'll turn on all these lights. Why? Because I can. Okay. It sounds like everything's running, so let's select fuel. Now we'll prime it once, twice, thrice is very nice. Parking brake is still on. Let's see if we can convince it to start. Hand to the magneto switch. Off, I got, okay, there's right, left, both, and start. Okay, that's working. I'm not going to do any kind of a run-up thing here because I want to save time. So what am I testing here? Well, so far the panel has worked pretty well. I'm going to just see if I can tune the radios here. I should be on COM1 here as I turn this dial, and I am. You can see it. The large exter external dial, the outside dial, channels the big numbers, and then the little one channels the inside one channels the little numbers, and then the switch works. So we've got 118.3 on standby. We'll put it back on use. Um, okay, so that works. The radio panel works too. That's awesome. All right, let's take the park brakes off. And we'll go for a little flight. The other thing I'm testing is um, OBS Studio. Now, I tried to learn how to record videos I think I chopped that guy's head off. Oh, well. It's not like he was using it. Um, I tried to figure out how to use OBS Studios two or three times. And it was just too bloody hard for me. I could not figure it out. But this friend of mine... Okay, so here we stop. That's the, that's the stop and check line. And look for traffic and get clearance. You get clearance for the tower to go. But, but anyway, this friend of mine in the Pimax Discord, Sky King... He's also a subscriber to this channel. <laughs> More fool he. And he, uh, he private messaged me and offered to help. So uh, he and I got together 
virtually in the Discord today, and he walked me through setting up OBS. And it's recording now, and if it doesn't turn out well, it's my fault, not his. Because Sky King is a genius. I kid you not. And he, he is just a real nice fella. So I thank him very much. Let's see if we can get out there. Let's get out to the center line. And away we go. <clears throat> I've got eye tracking working on this new headset. So I was very, very tempted to try testing that. But I'm not sure I understand what I'm doing with it. So I, I don't want to test dynamic foveated rendering until I'm sure I'm doing it correctly. Because I, I really can't form a, a conclusion until I know that I'm, I can trust the results I'm getting. Well, that was a flapless takeoff, wasn't it? Oh, that's all right. I just love Makesfield. I love flying over Chicago, that toddlin town. The marina is so beautiful. Makesfield, what a loss that was, but I don't want to talk about it because I don't live in Chicago and I don't have any right to criticize Mayor Daly. Uh, but feel free to if you want to. You can criticize them for tearing down Meg's Field. But I don't live in Chicago, so uh, perhaps there were really good reasons for it. But I'm glad it's still in flight sim. Well, on the crystal, I've got... Well, let's just see what I've got resolution set to here. Let's act a pause. I'm showing 31 frames per second right now, which isn't very good. But I think that's because something's going on. I want to turn eye tracking off. That's what I want to do. And uh, let's go back up. I'll go to system. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Come on, Dave. Think about what you're doing. Let's get to... All right. Let's go to system. Good. And now we'll go to... Okay, why can't I get to where I want to be? There we go. System. All right, I've got resolution set fairly high here, so I'm going to turn it down just a hair. Oh, I accidentally... I've got the throttles mapped to the key that I use to... Uh, all right, so I've got it mapped to, to turn resolution down in uh, OpenXR. So I've got it set to 3299 by 3903. And now I'm just going to exit Flight Sim. And then when I restart it, it'll reset that key and we'll have the throttle back. Okay, good. Now we're going to have to reset VCR to see if that change does anything. VCR? Did I say VCR? <laughs> uh, yeah, VCR. A lot of the people on YouTube don't remember what a VCR was. It was crackling technology when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, just let me. Well, we're on the right panel. We'll go back. There we go. Oh, and now we're up to 42 frames per second. So turning the resolution down makes a big difference. I also have the settings set, you know, reasonably high in uh, in the flight sim itself. I'm running an i 9 9900 32 gigs of RAM with an NVIDIA 3090. This was not quite state-of-the-art, but pretty damn good two years ago. And uh, it's still good. It's still a good machine. There's just something about having 24 gigs of RAM on your on your video card that is very appealing. And I love flying over Chicago. Do you want to see what it looks like at night? Let's do that. Let's have a look at night. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized what I need to do. I need to turn I need to turn my light on so I can see what I'm doing at night. Okay. Let's set the time to 
Yeah, 4.30 in the morning. And now let's fly around. Oh, man. That really does look amazing, doesn't it? I hope it's turning out well on OBS. Again, if it doesn't, it's not Sky King's fault. It's mine. I must have screwed something up. There is no mistake so simple that I can't make it. As I have proven repeatedly over the course of my misspent youth. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go for an external view here and, and see if we like that. All right, now let's just move around the airplane. Looking down almost gives me a sense of vertigo. It's so clear. It's fantastic, really. Okay, back into the cabin. We'll just cruise around for a minute or two here in the dark, which is another metaphor for my life. <laughs> Walking around in the dark, never knowing quite where I'm going or not even sure when I've got there. That sound like your life? Mine's been fun, but it, uh, it's had its, eh, let's just say it's had its moments, as we all have. In the Chicago area, there's no artifacting. If you go to, if I fly at the Toronto uh, area, I get artifacting in downtown Toronto. Um, some of the buildings look like they've been uh, hit by a missile or something. So I'm, I'm hoping they'll fix that. Or maybe it's some setting I don't know about. Look at the marina. One thing I always do in uh, Flight Sim 2020, well, I'll show you. Let me just pause this again. This is, this is what I do. Uh, with graphics. So I've got it set on quality. If I set it on balanced, it would be faster still, but that doesn't matter. Terrain level of detail I've got set to 130. I can set that up a bit and not much will happen. But this is one of, I think, only two settings I have on Ultra for my 3090. Off-screen terrain pre-caching. That means the scenery that you haven't got on your screen yet gets cached in advance. And I really like that. I'll apply and save. Uh, because then you don't find that the boats are appearing in the marina as you fly over them. <laughs> it's disconcerting to have scenery appear as you fly over it. So if you do that, if you set it on ultra, generally you'll never have to worry about that. Alrighty. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go back to daylight hours. And we'll land this airplane and we'll see if I can make any conclusions. Did I say influsions? I meant conclusions. Don't tell me what I mean. Let me figure it out for myself. That could take a while. All right. We'll just descend a bit here. I just... I just love Chicago in uh, Flight Sim 2020. To me, it's just, and Meg's Field makes it so accessible. So we're showing 41 frames per second, and that's not bad because I think that's low because Windows is updating something in the background or something. I don't know. I'm not what you call your technical guru, not by any stretch of the imagination. So, let's put, car, put carp heat on. Like to do that before you land. I'm a little bit high, so I'm going to cheat down as I go to downwind. Not that it really matters. This is something I love about VR. I can lean forward and look around the struts and and orient myself. Much easier than using K 
keys to look around, I think, you know, for me anyway, and much more immersive. And I'm quite happy that my Logitech panels work, so that's a success. Uh, and if I can do it, anyone can, and I think I'll get better at it as I go along. Uh, it seems to work very well in Flight Sim 2020. I haven't tried it in DCS. I've got a horrible suspicion that it won't work out of the box with DCS. I may have to get a, a third party program to get it to work. And I don't really need it in IL2. Actually, in DCS, I can use the mouse, but again, it's really nice to be able to, uh, it's really nice to be able to flip a switch instead of clicking it with a mouse. Yeah, we're way too high. We're a thousand feet too high, so I'm going to do a 360 here. Sometimes where I flew, Tower would ask us to do a 360 to give traffic time to exit or something. And so we'd make a turn like this. And I'm making a descending turn. I'm going to maybe make another one. My flight instructor, who had been a fighter pilot for years and years, was flying uh, an aerobatic plane, a Cetabria. He used to do air shows. And he, or was it a Pitts? I can't remember, but he was in the pattern and they asked him to do a 360, so he did a loop. <laughs> they called him a wise guy, but they laughed. Anyway, he told me that story and I believe him because he was, he's as honest a man as I've ever known. All right. We're just about at the right height. Speed is good. Everything's in the green. Carb heat is on in case the carb ice is up. And that can happen at any temperature, I guess. Uh, it doesn't just happen in the winter. If your carb ice is up, then suddenly you push the throttle and you got nothing. That's a that's a bad thing if you have to go around. Okay. Let's put a notch of flaps in. Okay. And I use the highly scientific method of look over your shoulder and say, oh, that's about right, to judge when to turn on to base. And on base, you can legally start to descend, but I've been kind of cheating on this. So, all right. It'll be a short base. Another notch of flaps before I turn. There we go. Just do a little gentle slip here. Let the airspeed come down. Well, this is looking pretty good. For an old fat man in a cruel world, I'm doing all right. Now let's just hold it off through the stall. Hold it off, hold it off. Okay, now I can let the nose come down. Well, although it came down a little bit more abruptly. Than abruptly? That's sort of like abruptly, but it's... No, I'm not going to go there. I was going to make a silly joke, as is my want. Okay. You know, if you've been around this channel for a while, one of the few things that's worse than my sloppy flying are my silly jokes. So. I tried to drive into that hangar over there, <clears throat> but it wouldn't let me. I thought it'd be cool to park in the hangar, <clears throat> but it wouldn't let me. So I'm just going to park over here. Oh, well, we'll just get somebody to pull us back. <laughs> Turn it <in> circles here. <laughs> Ah, oh, incompetence, thy name is Finn. All right, so park brake is on. 
we can use my panel again. Oh, the excitement, the excitement of using a new toy. Yeah, it's so cool. All right, let's start turning things off. Actually, I shut the engine down first. That'll probably eject us from the game. Yeah, it does. Okay, as soon as you shut the engine off, it ejects you back to the main menu. Back to the main menu. Uh, allocution is the solution. So here's my conclusion. One, the Logitech panels are going to work fine for me, which is really cool because I like them. And uh, two, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping OBS recorded this properly, and I'll credit Sky King if it did. And three, I did not test dynamic foveated rendering. I wanted to, but I, I'm not sure what I'm doing, so I can't give it a fair judgment. And I don't want to come on, on, on my channel and say, well, geez, that doesn't work very good, if the problem is that I screwed it up, which is all too common on my channel. So um, everybody else tells me it's great, so I'll just look into it a little bit more. I, I only just recently got this new headset, uh, the replacement for my prototype, or po late production model that does die, uh, eye tracking so without that you can't do the foveated dynamic foveated rendering anyway um, I will be testing that and thank you for putting up with my rambling and I hope this worked in OBS if it's posted on YouTube then it did yay okay <laughs> have a good night and we'll talk soon